Skull and welcome my friends, I'm Harotrak and this is my short um, tutorial for camping in Expeditions Viking. Um, camping is a pretty integral part of the game, you'll spend a lot of time um, doing that because your people will get fatigued, they have to eat and you're traveling a fair bit in the game and every time you travel you see camping sites like this. Um, they can either be occupied, um, then they have this red thing and you have to... to um, fight to actually get access to that camping site or you, they are not occupied and you can just travel there and camp without any problems. Each of these camping sites has um, three indicators of the quality um, of the camping site. So they have a food indicator, a shelter indicator and a security indicator. The food indicator just um, signifies the amount of game in the area. Uh, the more game, uh, the better the hunting opportunities for your um, for your herdsmen that go out to hunt. Shelter um, has a chance to apply a buff to your people, the well-rested buff. The higher the, um, the shelter level, um, the higher the chance to get that buff. And the security level just um, determines um, your chance of being attacked or um, of having your things stolen. The higher the security, the lower that chance. So let's just jump into this um, very high food, normal shelter, high security foresty area over here. Yep, let's just go in. I'm going to turn off my um, my face cam because I'm actually uh, going to um, be right above some uh, numbers that we need to see. All right, so this is the camping menu. You can see that we have four shifts. You can tell your people to do um, different things in each of these shifts. Um, up here are the um, values that I just talked about, the food value, the shelter value and the security value. You have the most influence over the security value because you can actually decide at the end of your camping stay to clean up um, after yourself. If you want to use a camping site repeatedly, that is a pretty good idea. So just set any person to clean um, and that'll actually go slightly up even that security value. So next time you um, rest in a higher um, in a higher security camp. If you don't care about it, if it's just a throwaway camp on the on the road, it might not be worth it to invest um, that one shift into cleaning, but um, that is something that you have to decide for yourself. Um, the food value will go down if you um, hunt um, excessively in an area like that, so that is something to keep in mind. Maybe not um, overhunt the, um, the game in an area. Right, so we have these four shifts. Certain things can only be done in certain shifts. Like the cleaning, for example, has to be done at the end. Cooking is something that has to be done in the beginning. Cooking has a chance to apply a the well-fed buff to your people. The higher the rank, the higher the chance. So that's pretty good. Um, and then you need uh, your people to, to eat. Um, how does that work? Well, you have two types of food. You have the rations, which never spoil, and you have the meat. Um, which does spoil. You can get new meat um, by hunting. I have a hunter over here, Ketil. Um, each time he goes out hunting, he brings two meat per um, per hunt uh, per hunting shift. So um, and we have a 95% chance to actually get some meat. He's a really good hunter, so that shouldn't be a problem at all. So we can actually expect him to bring back about 20 meat. And you can tell your people pretty um, detailed what they should eat um, over here. You have the um, you can either tell them to eat rations or to eat meat, then switch to rations. Um, you can assign that to all. And you can also tell them who eats first. If you are so low on food that not everyone can eat, it might be a good idea to maybe let your best fighters eat so that they are fit for battle, or maybe the most loyal or the least loyal. That can all be fine-tuned over here. I really like that. If you have meat, which we currently don't. Um, then you can set someone to preserve that meat into rations um, with this with this job. Currently we don't have any meat. Um, the higher the rank, the higher the conversion rate. Um, same thing goes for the witchcraft. Um, witchcraft converts herbs that you can just find in the world into actual usable medicine. So um, you can set that for multiple shifts at witchcraft and you can see that the amount of medicine that we're getting is going up and up and up. Okay, so... Um, that's the thing, we covered food and we covered medicine almost because healing is also done in um, the camp menu. So per shift you can heal one injury. If people have multiple injuries, you'll be able to select the injury that you want to treat. Injuries have a deterioration risk. So each of these um, has its own inherent deterioration risk. So pick the ones that are more likely to fester and get rid of them. You can't just ignore them because at some point they're actually gonna die. <laughs> so this one has one, two, three, four, five stages and at the sixth one they're actually gonna die. So 
treat those injuries definitely you see the medicine cost that you that you're gonna pay for this and then we're gonna spend one shift actually healing him up and let's spend the other shift to actually heal up Nefia. Now, um, people need to sleep at least two shifts to not be fatigued. If, this, if they sleep less than that, they're going to be fatigued. Um, what you can do is you can skill the heavy sleeper skill in the, in the, in the uh, utility tree. And that um, reduces their need for sleep. So they only need to rest one shift. I think that is pretty much a must pick because it does make you a lot more efficient. Um, you can get a lot more done during camping. I would pick it for everyone, um, except maybe for uh, a herdman that you know that you're never going to take out because they might not fit your your build um, and the people that you're running with. Like, for example, Aedis over here. I can't really use her um, with the combination of companions that I have. So I've decided to make her sort of a camp follower um person that is that is helping other people so she's gonna pick up the cooking skills she's already doing all the repairing she's gonna be preserving as well um you can still give her the heavy sleeper perk to make her more efficient because then she can do more but it doesn't really matter then if she's fatigued or not if she's not gonna fight um so that's the thing um crafting is done um in the camping um uh, in the camping time as well as is repairing um repairing is a skill that um lets you um, yeah, repair damaged equipment. And uh, the higher the repairing skill, the less material cost you need. Um, he needs five um, hides to repair that fur hermit. Um, Aedis with the level five repair skill only needs two to repair the same cell hermit, so that is something. Crafting, um, you're just gonna craft a, maybe let's, let's just craft a very cheap ax. I actually did a crafting tutorial where you can look at the crafting in detail if you want to. Um, just check out the playlist where this video is in. Um, okay, so we've got our crafting done. We have our um, guarding to uh, care for next. So each shift you need at least five ranks of guarding. Um, so it is a good idea to actually specialize your people. And I have brought up Gunnar to be a guard. He is a rank five guard and he is the heavy sleeper. So he only needs to sleep one shift and we have to cover that shift in one form or fashion. You can see the security values for each shift individually and then your overall security value down here. So we have one night with 85 where Gunnar is sleeping and uh, I'm guarding. Guarding um, is about the only thing that someone can do who's injured. You can see that all the other things are grayed out, not only because some require ranks, can't also not do the um, scouting or hunting because I'm injured. Uh, but guarding you can still do, you can still keep an eye out. So I guess we're going to have Nefe guard as well. And now we're super protected. Really good. Um, Kettle, we're going to send you out for the hunting. Um, the other thing um, about picking the heavy sleeper perk for everyone is the fact that you don't have to remember who has it and who doesn't, which can be kind of difficult. I think I did not pick it with him. Well, it doesn't really matter for the demonstration, but um, Aslifer also doesn't have it. So let's take... Uh, yeah, actually, it's fine. No, let's have him rest and uh, let's have her do the the repairing. So we got over this, um, we got over the guarding. You can see down here the value set you have. The last thing that we really need to look at is scouting. Um, everyone can scout, but I've brought um, Raskova out um, over here up to a level five scouting, and that just lets you sort of find points of interest around your camp where you can find resources or um, consumable items or that kind of stuff um, around your campsite. So um, in each shift that you add um, increases your chance of actually finding things. So we have a 95% chance of scouting something useful, 95% chance of hunting something useful. We can't preserve anything. We're going to gain three herbs and uh, our camp is very well protected and the security is going to go up. So now we did everything and we can pretty much just uh, tell them to make camp now and they're going to do their various chores. Um, Sometimes things can happen. I'm just going to um, skip that because it doesn't really have any bearing on us. But um, yeah, people will strike up conversations and other stuff um, during camp. Right. So when you're done camping, you get the camping results. You have, we lost ration. People have eaten rations. We got six meat. We got some medicine, uh, lost medicine, lost salvage, lost herbs and lost um yeah, that, that one ration. We got a tool axe and people lost their injuries. Everyone is now healthy. Um, all of the herdmen have eaten. Three of them have become fatigued, so I didn't really do the sleeping very well. My scouts have found something of interest nearby. And that's the thing that we're going to have a look at right now, because we're 
basically done. This is how the scouting uh, scouted things look. So we can just click on it, travel there, and we gain four wood. It's not a huge amount of things, but it racks up over time. So if you can spare someone for scouting, um, it's definitely a good idea. Right, so um, what are you going to take away from this? Um, heavy sleeper is a must pick, and then just specialize your people. Have a guards person, have one dedicated repairing person, have a crafting person, and try to spread those skills evenly um, among your people. Do clean up um, sites that you want to uh, use um, multiple times. If I were to camp now again, now I have 12 meat, I would actually have to worry about um, making them into rations because if I don't, then that kind of stuff will spoil. Um, you definitely need to either, f I mean, you can either feed your people that, um, that meat or preserve it. Um, and uh, then you'll actually be able to um, survive even if you don't really have a supply of food um, readily available to you. Right, so I'm going to end this. Um, if you found it useful, if you found it helpful, then please leave a like so that it can show up in search results, help more people. If you didn't, tell me why in the comments. Also leave any questions that you have in the comments. And uh, if you want to see more of my stuff, then please consider subscribing. I hope I see you in one of my other series. Have fun with Expeditions Viking. Bye bye.